Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got a great video for you guys and girls today. Elon Musk has been in court recently defending Tesla's 2016 $2.6 billion acquisition of SolarCity, a deal that was overwhelmingly supported by both Tesla shareholders and SolarCity shareholders at the time, myself included. 85% of shareholders voting in favor of this proposal. And honestly, I can't even understand how this frivolous lawsuit has made its way to court. It's a total waste of Elon Musk's time to be here defending something that 85% of shareholders voted in favor of. But in the United States of America, one of the most litigious societies on planet Earth, if not the most, sometimes truly absurd lawsuits find themselves in court. And one of the huge benefits to us as Tesla shareholders, is having the privilege of reading some of the transcripts of the heated interactions between Elon Musk and this lawyer. So in this video, we'll look at the history of the Solar City Tesla deal, and we'll get into some of the highlights of the first day in court. And man, are there some hilarious exchanges. So let's get into the video. If you love crypto, stocks, and free stuff, or just want to help out the channel, check out these great offers. BlockFi are launching the world's first Bitcoin rewards credit card. People in the US can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on every purchase with no annual fee using the BlockFi Bitcoin rewards credit card. Check out the link in the description. And for a limited time, you can get up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash, and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto, use the the link in the description and if you'd like up to two free stocks check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account you'll get one free stock valued up to $300 just for opening an account and if you make an initial deposit of $5 or more you'll get a second free stock valued up to $2,000. Seriously Free stocks? Yes, please. And finally, if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also linked in the description. Thanks so much for your support, guys. Let's get back to it. First of all, a quick bit of history on the Tesla and SolarCity deal. Let's head over to the Tesla website from a blog post in 2016. Tesla and SolarCity to combine. 1st of August, 2016. Just over a month ago, Tesla made a proposal to purchase SolarCity, and today we are announcing that the two companies have reached an agreement to combine, creating the world's only vertically integrated sustainable energy company. I'd just like to take a moment to jump in here. As you guys will know, if you're regular viewers of the channel, one of the keys to Tesla's success is vertical integration. This was a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant idea, it made so much sense, and the vast, vast majority of shareholders in both companies also saw the potential here. Solar and storage are at their best when they're combined. As one company, Tesla, Storage, and SolarCity, Solar, can create fully integrated residential, commercial, and grid-scale products that improve the way energy is generated, stored, and consumed. And as I've discussed at length in recent videos, this is the future of energy generation, storage, and supply. Distributed utilities, powered by Tesla software, moving energy about the place. Now is the right time to bring our two companies together. Tesla is getting ready to scale our Powerwall and Powerpack stationary storage products, and SolarCity is getting ready to offer next-generation differentiated solar solutions. By joining forces, we can operate more efficiently and fully integrate our products while providing customers with an aesthetically beautiful and simple one-stop solar plus storage experience. One installation, one service contact, one phone app. Blah, blah, blah. You guys get the point, right? This was an absolute fucking no-brainer. And of course, I personally voted in support of this. I was a SolarCity shareholder at the time, also a Tesla shareholder. So I voted in both cases in support of this deal, as did most other shareholders who understood the potential here. Fast forward half a decade later, literally five years down the track, and Elon Musk finds himself wasting time in court providing a deposition during this frivolous lawsuit. So let's have a look at the details of that now, and we'll also see some of the incredible highlights, some of the heated exchanges between Elon Musk and the lawyer who he describes aptly as a bad human being. And just quickly, I want to make an observation, and that is regarding Tesla's stock price. Despite the onslaught, the tsunami of FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt being spread in the mainstream media, the fake news. Tesla stock up over 4% for the day, despite Elon's court appearance and a slew of negative headlines. I think that this tweet from Ray for Tesla really sums things up. Tesla ignores all the negative headlines. We can see here from the Apple News app, three headlines here. From Business Insider, Tesla, full self-driving update may do the wrong thing at the worst time. Business Insider, Tesla's solar panel hell. Couple feel trapped in lease with leaks, mold. From MarketWatch, Elon Musk under fire again. CEO to testify over Tesla's acquisition of Solar City. Three negative headlines in the span of three headlines. A fair observation here from Big Billy 3000 
Tesla isn't being affected by FUD as much anymore as it would in years past. I completely agree with this. I've made this observation quite a bit in the last month or two. It seems like no matter how much FUD is being pushed out, Tesla's shareholders, the stock market overall, is no longer buying the BS. None of the fake news outlets have given any coverage to the positive news regarding Tesla recently, the full self-driving beta version 9 release over the weekend, which is stunning real-world AI. Very positive news out of China. No coverage whatsoever. Yet despite that, despite the onslaught of negative headlines, Tesla stock up over 4% for the day. We really have reached a tipping point now. Tesla investors are just too smart to pay attention to the fake news. So let's head over to the Wall Street Journal. Elon Musk defends SolarCity deal. Says of being Tesla boss, I rather hate it. Plaintiff's alleged billionaire entrepreneur led Tesla to overpay for the home solar company in 2016. Elon Musk was in court Monday to defend the company's purchase of Solar City, telling a judge that he didn't act improperly during the negotiating process and doesn't even enjoy running the electric vehicle maker. The case dates to 2016, when Mr. Musk was chairman of both companies, both of them unprofitable at the time. <laughs> oh boy, I, I can see the next two words. His solution? Combine them. Now, I just got to jump in here. Like, I probably don't need to be explaining this, but just in case there's somebody that's like, wait, what? It's very important. If your ultimate goal is to reach extremely large scale in business, especially if it's a capital intensive business, to forego profits to appease dopey shareholders for many, many years and instead invest aggressively in growth, scale, and ultimately driving down your cost, which is exactly what was going on. The way that this is worded, this article, it's almost saying, both companies weren't making any money, so Elon's solution, what an idiot, was just to combine these two loss-making companies. That'll solve the problem. This is pretty shady journalism, but anyway. Let's move on. His solution, combine them in a roughly $2.1 billion tie-up to establish a single clean energy business. Plaintiffs, which include pension funds that own Tesla stock, have characterized the deal as a scheme to benefit himself and bail out a home solar company on the verge of insolvency. And that's why practically every shareholder actually voted in support of this deal. Yeah, makes total sense. Mr. Musk, the opening and only witness in the first day, is scheduled to return to the stand Tuesday. He defended his actions in roughly five hours of testimony. Just jumping in here, I mean, can you imagine wasting five hours of Elon Musk's time? He's got shit to do. He shouldn't be in court defending frivolous lawsuits. He defended his actions, saying the Solar City purchase was crucial to the sustainable energy strategy he had envisioned for Tesla for a decade. And by the way, guys, Elon isn't fucking around here. Let's head over to the Tesla website to a 2006 Blog post, the secret Tesla Motors master plan, just between you and me, clearly tongue in cheek, from Elon Musk, 2nd of August, 2006. I'm just gonna get straight to the point here. So, in short, the master plan is, build a sports car, use that money to build a more affordable car, that's the SNX, use that money to build an even more affordable car, that's the three and Y. while doing above, also provide zero emission electric power generation options, aka solar. It's literally there in the 2006 master plan, 10 years before the Solar City acquisition. On Tesla's website, a blog post from Elon Musk explicitly stating that in the future, Tesla was going to provide solar to customers. I don't think Solar City was financially troubled, Mr. Musk said. In order to have a compelling product, you really need to have a tightly integrated solar and battery solution. And we could not create a well-integrated product if Solar City was a separate company. A primary question in the case is whether Mr. Musk, who owned roughly 22% of Tesla at the time, controlled the transaction. Again, do I point out that practically every shareholder of both companies voted in support of this acquisition? Like, why is this in court? I mean, honestly. Proving the claim is challenging because Mr. Musk was a minority shareholder of Tesla and the company's shareholders approved the acquisition. Uh, exactly. Lawyers for Mr. Musk have said that Solar City was worth more than Tesla paid for it, and the electric vehicle maker's board members, who included Mr. Musk's brother Kimball Musk, acted independently. The billionaire CEO, I just love how the media throws the word billionaire around like it matters, like it means anything. It has a negative connotation a lot of the time, usually only in the eyes of people who are, let's be honest, low status people who, in addition to being low status, also just hate the world, have a negative pessimistic attitude, don't take any ownership from their own situation. And yes, I totally understand people have difficult times, but here's the thing. The use of the term billionaire is explicitly to appeal to the people who think that all billionaires are greedy and the only way they got their money is taking from others. The billionaire CEO, who has a record of sometimes blunt and surprising statements, said on Monday that he didn't enjoy being the boss of Tesla. I quote, I rather hate it and would much prefer to be spending my time on design and engineering, which is intrinsically what I like doing, he said. This should not come as a surprise to anyone who's familiar with Elon Musk. Duh. Mr. Musk made the comment after opposing counsel tried to show how his force of will and faith in his view of Tesla's future illustrated his ability to control the Solar City transaction. Mr. Musk spoke in a calm and sometimes quiet tone as he answered his lawyer's questions. He became more energetic when he fielded questions from Randall Barron, a lawyer for the plaintiffs. 
Mr. Barron pressed Mr. Musk on whether he dominated Tesla, handpicked its board members and made decisions without directors' involvement. Mr. Musk has already displayed flashes of his sometimes combative nature in the case, making for a confrontational witness in a 2019 deposition calling Mr. Barron reprehensible for attacking sustainable energy. To explain the behaviour, Mr. Musk told the court he didn't respect Mr. Barron because the lawyer had once worked at a law firm whose partners became engulfed in an ethics scandal and went to prison over their misdeeds. I think you are a bad human being, Mr. Musk said to Mr. Barron. Mr. Barron asked Mr. Musk why SolarCity's performance varied significantly from the projections that Tesla gave to shareholders in 2016. Mr. Musk blamed the decline in solar panel installations and market share to Tesla's pressing need to focus on developing its Model 3 car in 2017 and 2018. Tesla at the time was struggling to bring the car to market. Everyone familiar with Tesla's story will understand this is completely legitimate. Tesla had massive difficulties in ramping the Model 3. It was a make or break moment for the company. All hands on deck focused on the Model 3. Literally the entire company, people from all different departments were just focused on getting this vehicle to volume production. If they didn't, there would be no more Tesla. Those were the three hardest years of my entire career, he said, later calling the period excruciating. The company was in dire straits. Many of the times I thought we were out of the woods, we were not. If Mr. Musk loses, he could be asked to make Tesla whole. That payment could equal the value of the SolarCity transaction if the presiding judge finds that the solar firm wasn't worth anything when Tesla agreed to buy it. <laughs> I'm giving this practically zero chance. Even so, <laughs> Elon could just go to his bankers and go, hey guys, I need to draw a little bit on that line of credit. Thanks, a couple of billy, here you go. F off, problem solved. Other Tesla board members at the time of the tie-up agreed to settle last year for a combined 60 million paid by insurance. The board members, some of whom had interest in both Tesla and Solar City, denied wrongdoing. This just shows the level of conviction Elon Musk has that there was no wrongdoing here and the size of his colossal testicles. Everyone else agrees to a settlement, admits no wrongdoing, covered by insurance, done and dusted. Elon Musk, again, I think this is part of being on the autism spectrum as well, has a really strong sense of justice and is willing to fight this because it's an absurd lawsuit. All right, that's enough of the article. Now it's time to get into the juicy part of this video. Some of the highlights of the exchanges between Elon Musk and Mr. Barron. Musk said he doesn't respect Barron because he first worked at a law firm, Milberg Weiss, whose partners were imprisoned for paying kickbacks to expert witnesses and plaintiffs and later went to another firm, Robbins Geller, whose partners were also jailed. I mean, first of all, congratulations to Elon Musk for doing his homework. Second of all, I gotta say, I mean, it's not necessarily a good look to be somebody that's been at two firms consecutively who've had people in prison for literally breaking the law. I mean, not a good look. Quote, you were mentored by criminals, Musk said. Then you continued to be mentored by criminals, and that is why I do not respect you. I think you are a bad human being. And now leading this frivolous lawsuit, it's hard to argue with Elon on this one. Wasting the guy's time, Elon's out here trying to change the world for the better, and he's spending hours defending this frivolous lawsuit because of this douche lord lawyer taking on this case. Fair comments from Elon, in my opinion. The exchanges between Musk and Barron were at times testy. That's a loaded question, Musk told the lawyer. That's my job, Barron responded. Well then, good job, Musk fired back. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Quote, I have great respect for the court, but not for you, Musk told Barron. I think you're a bad human being. Barron asked Musk if he'd agreed that fundamentally he doesn't like other people to tell him what to do. Not exactly, Musk replied calmly. In fact, I view critical feedback as a gift. He adds, to be honest, I don't want to be the boss of anything. I don't want to be CEO. I tried not to be CEO of Tesla, but I had to or it would die. Barron showed a slide that said more than 80 Tesla executives have fled since 2016. Musk responded tiredly, they've left, they haven't fled. Musk was also asked about his sense of humour, a part of the questioning about adopting the title of Techno King. <laughs> I love this. Quote, I do have a sense of humour. I think I'm funny, he said. It is beneficial to Tesla because it generated tons of free press. That is actually quite helpful for generating sales. If we are entertaining people, they would write stories about us and we don't have to spend on advertising, which would reduce the price of our cars. Another very fair point. And just finally, a quick bit of banter. Musk's lawyer has wrapped up, and here is the investor's lawyer, Randy Barron, starting right in on Musk. He gives Musk fair warning that we have a long way to go, probably all day today and into tomorrow. Musk jokes that he can tell from the size of Barron's binder. It's good to see that Elon Musk is maintaining a sense of humour through this frivolous lawsuit, but I've got to say, man, can you imagine being the person that wastes two, three, four days of Elon Musk's time on a frivolous lawsuit? He's got a mission to accomplish, and it's a mission that's to the benefit of every human being on the planet. 
And guys, just an aside, if you ever want a little bit of entertainment, I recommend looking through some of the transcripts of Elon's prior depositions in court. There's some hilarious quips in there. Always happy to frankly share his thoughts. Sometimes this can be seen as derisive, but in truth, Elon's just being honest and speaking from the heart. And I have to agree with Elon's comments here. Wasting two or three days of Elon's time with a frivolous lawsuit when he's got an important mission to accomplish? I certainly wouldn't describe this lawyer as a good human being. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Is this lawyer one of the greatest douchebags to ever exist on planet Earth? Or does he have a legitimate case here? In either case, I'm glad to see that this tsunami of FUD and this lawsuit is having zero impact on the price of Tesla stock. As I said earlier in this video, I think we've finally beaten the FUD. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card where you can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on every purchase. There's a link in the description. You can also earn up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi, also linked below. And finally, don't forget your free stocks with Weeble and Stake, also linked in the description. These great offers also help out the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.